Today, Today in, space. in Space. Hello and welcome to Today in Space. Thank you for joining us. As always, I am your host, Alex Giorfanos. I am your science communicator for this podcast. And, you know, this week we got to actually talk about uh, a cool thing that a fan sent in. So thank you so much for that. And if you have any other topics you'd like me to talk about, any kind of articles, any, anything like that, send it our way. And because th- these are fun episodes, uh, but we'll get into that in just a second. But first, what I have to tell you guys about is uh, I just heard back. I applied to this a little while ago and I can finally talk about it here. But I am now I just got accepted to the NASA social event for the CRS-19 mission. So at SpaceX launch, I'm actually going to be able to be a member of the media. I get to go and cover the launch. I get to interview people that are involved. It- it's it's such an awesome, I, I, I did this once before, early in the podcast, uh, we uh, got accepted for NASA Social back with the, the New Horizons mission uh, the to Pluto, and I got to go to APL in Maryland and meet the team, talk to them, we had a presentation uh, where we had the scientists explain to us uh, about the actual mission and different instruments on the spacecraft. It was it was a, an extremely nerdtastic day, especially for an aerospace engineer. So that was one of the one of the cool things that this podcast has kind of let me do is is to to, you know, uh, for me the original path was always, you know, oh, an aerospace engineer, you'll apply there someday, maybe you'll do an internship there. Uh, but that's how I would kind of work with NASA and through this podcast I've found this weird side door that yeah, uh, has kind of been opened up because of this podcast. So we did that with the New Horizons mission, which was four years ago now. So now uh, I get to go back and experience my first rocket launch. I've never been actually physically to a rocket launch. I've never seen one in person. I've never felt what a rocket launch feels like. And I get to do it on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket, one of the most revolutionary rockets of our time. I get to experience that and and it's another it's the 19th resupply mission that that SpaceX is launching with Falcon 9s and with Dragon capsule. I mean that's the Dragon capsule is what helps actually get SpaceX the funding to do that to to do the CRS missions uh, along with Boeing so then the commercial crew program you know that's how it came up because eventually SpaceX would be able to uh, not only launch cargo but American astronauts from American soil on American rockets once again, and that Boeing is doing the same. So I get to do that. It's super exciting. I'm so excited. There's a bunch of things I got to figure out, but I've already reached out to some people. It is going to be a busy week. So the first week of December, uh, my hope is to kind of release a whole bunch of stuff like every day. So that week of December, uh, right after Thanksgiving, make sure to check this out because we're going to be doing a ton of stuff for that. But going into this week's episode, so. Thank you very much, Rachel, for sending this in. But I got an article uh, about something that that caught my attention. The the title of it is "How Can a Star Be Older Than the Universe?" It's from Space.com. You can find that article in this week's episode in the description. And what's really cool about it is it, is it brings up a lot of things we talk about in this podcast. Are the the it's not just the science. It's not just literally what's happening today in space. It's also about the 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 fascinating things like. The things about science that makes you stay around to learn more. The, the things about science that catch you in. I, I think it's, it's almost like the philosophy of science and these kind of conundrums that happen that make science so amazing. You know, it's, 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 that, it's that little extra bit that scientists, people that love science, love looking at the unknown and saying, I want to figure that out. Like it doesn't, it doesn't scare them. The unknown it doesn't, it doesn't make them walk away from it. It makes them go, Oh, I want to learn more about this, you know, and that's the infinite Pandora's box, you know, of science where it's like, every time you answer a question, you bring up a, a, so many other questions. And so the further science goes down, the more questions you find. And so this is one of those fascinating ones for, for many reasons. Basically, the, the, the general idea of this is that there is a star called Methuselah, and Methuselah is a, a, an ancient character, you know, from the Bible, uh, and, you know, if I take Wikipedia's uh, quick chunk of it, because Wikipedia is, is like the Webster's Dictionary of our time, uh, everyone does it, uh, and anyone can change it, but Wikipedia says uh, Methuselah was the grandfather of Noah, 
you know, Noah's Ark, in Genesis, in the Bible. Uh, he's known for living to the ripe a- old age of 969, and uh, is usually re- referenced in, you know, works of art and entertainment as, like, long age. That's what he's really known for, right? So, this star, Methuselah, which is aptly named this, is about 190 light years away, and apparently registers in at an age that dates further back than the start of the universe from the Big Bang, which means that how the way that we, we know science, the way that these readings are being taken, this star is older than the universe, which is impossible, which brings up a whole bunch of questions. What's wrong? Is it the age of that star? Is it the age of the universe? Which, arguably, both could be the answer. But what it came down to is this part of science that we don't talk about until it's convenient to talk about it. And that is the idea of uncertainty and the idea of error. You know, we, there's some, a lot of the reason this podcast exists is because what pop culture is kind of pulling and dragging science through, through the weeds. And it's science becoming popular and science becoming something that's in the day-to-day talk is there's a lot of people who talk about science who don't really know what science is. And it comes across, especially if you do science in little tidbits without giving people the context behind it, it looks like magic. It seems like magic, right? And so one of the things that scientists, people in science, who I am and and you people listening most likely are in some capacity, I think we can do a better job of selling science up front because in, in today's world, and, and in a world where science is seen as pop culture, it can be taken down by the simple fact of not mentioning that science has error. Science is never perfect. Science is always evolving. And one of the things we talked about on the show before is that it's scientific to say, I don't know. And what we don't, what we shouldn't do, is my opinion, is what we shouldn't do is promote this idea that science is magic or that there isn't error involved and that the, the scale of the error on, on, on the, the measurements that this article goes into, just, just to talk about it, right? So it was registering longer than the universe existed, which doesn't make sense. And so there was a bunch of going back and forth of like, well, okay, you know, that star doesn't have all the same ingredients, for lack of a better way of saying it, as most of the stars that are compared in that kind of equation, right? So obviously there's some error in there that it's it's not really even using the right rules when it's using that that estimation. And the the actual error, you know, we're talking about billions of years here, right, for the age of the star and for the universe, billions of years, right? 16 billion years for the star, 13.8 billion years uh, for the universe, which again has its own error. And so the error on this is in the millions. The, it's, it has a plus or minus uh, for, for the estimation of this star, the tolerance. There's a plus or, minor, plus or minus of 800 million years when they actually took the time to figure it out and, and customize the equation to fit it properly. It actually registered with that tolerance within the right age so that we can say, okay, yes, you know, the age of the universe is off by this much probably, which means this star could just be a very early star from the very, very beginning and not necessarily that it's older than the universe. But we only talk about this when it's convenient. And, you know, a good example of this is, you know, it, during the debate, uh, Bill and I had with uh, another guy who was was debating the point that basically the world is only, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to get this wrong, but th- there are people out there that believe the world is 5,000 years old, or there's, there's a number, but basically the length of that if someone took, you know, from religious texts, oh, it could only be this long, just like the same thing. I, I don't think anyone really thinks this man lived until 969 years old. It's a story. It's possible that it's just written that way to explain to people that don't understand years and the age of the universe. Like, maybe that makes it seem longer. Okay, that makes sense. But anyways, Bill and I was debating this. I remember it was one of the first things. I saw it on Twitter. I had it on my phone. I was watching it live. And that guy brought up a point. The guy was arguing that Earth is not as old, uh, is, is thousands of years old. He brought up the error that is in the carbon dating uh, of things. And, and I didn't know this. You know, we're talking like, 
again, hundreds of thousands of years, plus or minus, and, and that can make a huge difference. I mean, that's a whole, I mean, think about the age of, of America, right? There's a Joe Rogan bit about this, that literally the people that came over here that started this country were three people ago, if everyone lived to 100 years old. That's insanity. That's crazy. And to think of, you know, ah, oh, we only know the answer within, you know, 30,000 humans or so. Like, that's 500,000 humans, uh, generations of humans. Like, that that's a long time. And in the end, Bill Nye still made a great point, and he brought up this thing of uncertainty and this thing of error, and that this does happen, but it's about knowing how good that could be and then learning new techniques and never f- finitely saying this is how things are. And I, I think... If we're able to bring that up front and we're, we talk about the uncertainty that's in measurements and we find a way to interestingly bring up the idea that, you know, science isn't perfect and it's always evolving and that's okay if you're wrong. It's actually you, being wrong brings you to the next answer. Like if you were always right, you wouldn't actually be learning new things. And so being wrong is part of the process. And I think there's some growing up that we all need to do. And I'm, I'm not trying to preach here. It's just a, it's... I, I believe this is something I'm striving for, and I'm putting it out there, and I think we can all do a better job of not making science seem like magic. That's, that's really my point this week, and bringing up uncertainty and error is huge, and, and it also brings light to the idea that, wow, we are constantly figuring out what reality is. I mean, you think about how much the world has changed since I was a kid in the 90s, and anyone that's older than it is laughing at me even mentioning that because that's just insanity. But the world has changed a lot in not a lot of time, and it seems to be growing even more exponentially. And so the things that we had as expectations 10 years ago have to be completely realigned, and and, and life is like that. Life is something that you have to constantly adjust for. I am constantly adjusting myself. And and because towards a goal of of living a healthier life, a happier life, where, you know, the people around me are also happy. <laughs> the, these are the things, this is life. This is, the, it's, a, it's a work in progress. And the more we can do to not make it seem like magic and make it seem that's something that's possible for everybody, the more people will then get into science. The more people that will then, when they see someone having a bad day or or, or kind of being an asshole, they go, they have a bad day. Not, wow, this person is a terrible person. It's these little things. If we all grow a little bit and, and, and are okay with the process of, hey, let's get better, then we're in a better place. And so this article, that's all this article made me think of, was that we all can do a much better job of bringing up when what reality is really like that it's tough that it's it's hard work uh, but if you stick to it and you and you're disciplined about it you can get things done it's the same exact thing with with some stuff in science if we're upfront about it it's like it's like the en- end of 8 mile right where <laughs> where Eminem <laughs> Marshall Mathers Bunny Rabbit uh says all the stuff that's wrong with him so the next guy has nothing to talk about and it's over. He won the whole thing. If we can do that with science, it's going to bring more people to science. It's not going to take people away from it. More people will say, oh, I actually do think this way. Oh, I think that's cool. Oh, and and then it stops the whole idea of, oh, I'm not smart enough to be in science. Oh, I don't have the brain to be a scientist or I don't have a, I, 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 there's no place for me in science because my junior high teacher made me feel dumb. (laughs) Like it can take away all of that. So those are my words of wisdom for this week. That's a big word. Those are, those, those are my thoughts for this week. And I hope you have a good one. I've got a lot of preparing to do for the SpaceX CRS-19 mission. I can't wait. First rocket launch. I'm, I'm so jazzed about that. And to see a bunch of friends, too. It's going to be a good time. It's going to be a great week. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are well. I hope you stay healthy. I hope you stay safe. Spread love. Spread science. Have a great week. We'll see you next time.